look like I just picked into somebody's recycle bin and that had gotten wet. They are rusty crusty goodness. They are tin cans. So let's see what beautiful home decor we can create with these today. Hi friends and fellow crafters, DIYers and creators. Yes, this is Ginger Chick Rehab. My name is Yvonne. If this is the first time you've ever been here on my channel, I am in my new craft room at our new house. So first craft, yay! So working minimal supplies right now because we don't have the studio workshop set up yet, but I did, be, I was able to create a craft for you all to enjoy and hopefully inspire you today. Honestly, I didn't really pick these out of somebody's recycle bin, but they did come in a haul from an auction and I thought, you know, I could send them on their way to be recycled or I could wait till I'm inspired to create something into beautiful home decor. But yeah, let's give them a bath first, let them dry and then start creating. I just don't know what attracts me to rusty, crusty goodness, that patina, oh my goodness. So I have some lunch sacks, <laughs> yep, yeah, yep, some brown paper lunch sacks that I have left over from my winter season of crafting from making snowflakes. So this is a per perfect opportunity when you come across stuff and you're moving a craft room and you're like, hey, I know what I wanna do. So I would like to wrap the brown paper around these tin cans. So I'm just going ahead and cutting it to size. So this is a smaller, regular size lunch bag. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's going to fit. I have a couple different sizes from my snowflake days. So let's see if it wraps around. Oh, plenty, I've got plenty. I don't want this to look like I just freshly cut it. I don't wanna have this aged can and a freshly cut piece of paper. So I'm just going to wet the edges of the paper bag just a little bit. And it, because it's kind of thick, I ended up having to do like both sides. It didn't just soak right through. I guess, you know, it's a lunch sack. They want it to last a little bit. Um, I just want to tear off those edges just to give it that worn look. And throughout this video, if you do hear my kitty cat Peach <laughs> talking in the background, he is still adjusting to our new house. So he's still trying to figure this all out. So I just used my Cricut tool to help me tear that those edges off. Now I'm rolling this up into the ball and I started to put Mod Podge on it before I remembered like, oh, I wanted to crinkle this up to get rid of those lines and give it more of an aged look. Well, you know, I could have cut another piece and faked it, but no, it is what it is. It is crafting at its best, y'all. So now I'm now I'm going to proceed on putting Mod Podge on the back of this. So now I'm going to go to my computer and I have so many downloads that I have purchased or free printables that I purchased off of Etsy or Pinterest. And so I'm just taking a little, little gander here to see what I have that I think would just be perfect on these cans. So <laughs> note to self during this video, it took me so many hours to get my printer hooked back up. I ended up having to call Canon and a nice gentleman walked me through it, had me hook up on my phone. So my phone, my iPhone would grab the wireless. And then since my iPhone and my Mac computer sync, then the computer after hours of trying so many other searches, I should have y'all customer service from big businesses like Canon are so helpful. 
I'll get flustered to think that like, this is just going to be an easy project. It's just going to be easy. I'm just going to do this, this, and that, and print off this, this, and that. Well, it doesn't work if your computer won't grab your new Wi-Fi at <laughs> your new house. Ah! But finally, I decided on these yummies. I like the four set, and I like the thought they were candles. They're the primitive vibe that I love. We're going, you know, we're still in summer, I know, but I, I do like those neutrals. So, and I want this to be white. I do. I don't want to print out in color. I want it to be white. Now, the hard thing when you have a page of four like this is playing with them in my Excel program. Excel programs are nice for um, sizing or whatever program you use. Um, so, I just keep like playing with my sizes going back to my print preview seeing so so it's still cutting off um so i want it you can actually get it so that all four of these images print off on one piece or you know individual pieces of paper but you just have to keep going back and forth sometimes when you're doing smaller or larger but i know that i, I you know I just wanted that size for this one so i knew that i could get it to print off so you know, when you, you first look and you're like, oh, well, that's not the size I need. That's why I like these because I can size them to what I need. So there we go. I got it printed out to what I wanted it. I wanted that crow. I just absolutely love crows. Nothing says primitive like a crow. But yes, so you just keep kind of playing around until you get the size that you want. And sometimes I print off sizes that are either too small or too big but i just stick them in a file because i know sooner or later i probably will go to them now i could just mod podge it right onto that paper but that's going to darken this image off and i really want it to be nice crisp white so i'm going to back my copier paper with copier paper so my my image is just nice and white love that white against that brown paper against that rusty crustiness but I'm going to age my edges just a little bit you know I may not have cut my line straight um <laughs> so I'm going to do that little burn edges technique why the paper is still wet I didn't cut right up to my original image so I'm just doing that little technique where you um take a lighter you light it on fire you put the fire out and it just gives it that worn look it'll it'll make that label that image pop even more and if you're wondering why it doesn't catch the whole paper on fire it's because the mod posh is still wet so you're doing this why it is still wet so that little outer edge that i left of the copier paper is really what's burning and just touching just a wee bit on the image I'm adding some more Mod Podge to the back of it to adhere it to it now. So I'm trying to center it. Um, I can't find my little rusty piece from Tracy for my round objects, but this is okay. I, I'm doing just fine. So I wanted to make sure that the seam of the tin can was centered in the back. Now I'm just taking a little bit of that water. I want to make sure because I double layered this paper, I want those edges for sure to be stuck down and a little bit of water. Now I just have a regular old copier just from Walmart nothing too fancy um I think it's just an inkjet it's just is what it is so it doesn't the it doesn't smear or anything like that so now I'm just taking the water over the entire piece just giving it a little bit more age now while that's drying I'm going to flip to my bigger can now I'm going to share with you how if you get those images stretched out enough you can see how it will print out on each individual piece of paper. So you can get a lar larger image of something that's just the four squares on one piece of paper. For my bigger can, which is like your coffee can size, I am using what they consider the extra large <laughs> lunch sack. Um, yeah, so I'm just cutting off that bottom part that has where it folds over. I don't want to deal with that. And then a little bit off the top where it usually has that little that little U, um, 
if need be, but I know that I needed to cut it off anyway to make it fit onto here. So I'm just guesstimating what size I need. And the nice thing about it, it doesn't have to be cut perfect because we're going to tear the edges again. Oh, it fits perfectly. I even got a little extra. So now I'm just going to see if I can really pull on. Lunch shacks are stronger than you think they should be. So I'm going to see if I can just try to rip it without taking too much off. So I have a little bit of seam here that's a double layer, so I'm going to go ahead and get that glued down. Um, just, I, it might be the edge that I might cut off, and it may not be the edge I might cut off. So I might as well just make sure that it's glued down. go ahead and match up my end piece with my seam in the back I should roll all the way and then I should have I have should have my two seams right in the back so ripping it did kind of shorten up the paper a little bit um, so maybe note to self if I do that again I might leave a little bit extra and rip it to size I didn't crinkle up this paper because it has those seams. Look at all that yumminess underneath. So I'm really trying to roll on those details to help them come out. Oh my gosh, look at that cat's face. Is it not too cute? Yes, this one was printed out and I hope that I can go to the website and be able to link these so that you guys can also um, go check them out at Etsy and support small business. Oh my goodness, so I've had these since last year, so I'm hoping that they're still there. Um, so yeah, just getting it cut out, leaving a little bit of the edging so I have something to burn. While that one's drawing, let's work on the smaller one. And, uh, you know, it's a little little shiny, a little brassy, goldy. So I was like, uh, well, it's not as rusty crusty as I would like it, but can I scrape some of this off? So I just have a scraping tool. And yeah, yeah, I don't need to scrape the whole can because the labeling is going to go over it. I just want to remove some of this goldy, brassy color that's on there. And it is actually coming off. I didn't have to scrape the whole can, but I achieved what I was going for. So now, same thing, smaller lawn sack, I'm going to cut it down.
but now for this can I needed to make it smaller oh <laughs> so I just kind of eyeball it's all a guesstimate you know that like I said sometimes you print them off and they're too big or they're too small and you just stick them in a file and hopefully you remember you have it um, for another project all ordered from factory direct before they have some of the greenery that i love it's now in stock oh yes so when i was searching for greenery that could be shipped and i can buy bulk of yes late to you see this it's almost like the baby grass that i love it's a little bit darker but it's got those hues of brown and the brown stems Oh, these are so fun, especially when I'm doing like that primitive vibe. And don't worry, I got some green. Look at these. Look how full these are compared, but it's two different looks. And just put them in there quite yet. I got a little bit more detailing to do just so it doesn't look like I just wrapped a piece of lunch sack around a tin can. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit of age just with some Waverly Antique and Wax just on the tips. I don't want to go crazy and make it look all dirty. I just want to add a little bit of age on that. So I'm just taking a paintbrush very gingerly, trying to follow the line of what I tore off. And then I'll go back in with a cotton, just a cotton ball and kind of rub it in just a damp cotton ball to help kind of spread that out. And to give the rest of the bag a little bit more age, I don't want to go crazy. I just, like I said, the cotton ball's wet. I just have like a dry brush technique but with a wet cotton ball of just a little bit of that Waverly wax on there. To add a little bit of embellishment, I kind of have, I don't even know, this isn't really dew, it's just a heavy string, very heavy black streak. And I thought, oh wow, this will really tie the black image with the brown paper. I could have went with jute, but I really want to pop that image. I really want you to see that black. Control them so they stay tight. I did three individual strings. So sometimes when you're trying to wrap one all the way around, it's hard without a helping hand of a finger <laughs> to hold that for you. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the next two where they're a little bit of antiquing wax, a little bit of age, just to tie this all together. Now it's time it to add the greenery and I could just flop the greenery in there but it would still kind of move around and I have this thrifted grass this is brown shredded something or other but I think that it's piled together enough that once I stuff it in there kind of loosely because you still want it to be enough that you can get the stems in there and I don't need to cut these stems down right now because they're tall <laughs> they're tall and so is this can so I'm just fluffing them back up because you know they were shipped so just spreading them out, but oh, see, I like that, that dark green with that little bit of brown in there, um, with that rusty crustiness, the brown paper, and that white label just a popping. So I'll just kind of work these in that grass, spread them out. I think this one will take either three, four, four or five, I think. I think I that needed the fullness. I always like to make it full, but not it's like you don't want to be cheap and put, not put enough in, but you don't want to overfill it um, either. The 
smaller can that is like a soup can size. I do need, I need, no, you can bend them over, but I had th I feel like I have a little bit more control spreading them out if I just take the time to snip that bottom off. I, I didn't say it was easy to snip some of these stems off, but I do have a little bit more control of where I can move the greenery around. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Oh my goodness, yes, I bet you I have you looking at those rusty, crusty piles at sales now looking for cans. And I'm sure you could achieve the same look of rusty, crusty cans with the Dixie Belt Patinas, which I absolutely love, but I just happen to have three rusty, crusty, okay, two and one weirdly aged one, but we scraped that gold off there and got it looking really sharp. So give me a quick comment down below. Have I inspired you to look at Rusty Krusty's secondhand finds in a new way? And yes, those printables are just awesome. It makes for a quick craft because you don't have to wait for shipping. You can size it to the product that the item that you're putting it on and you just, if you have a if you have a computer, you have a printer, you have ink, <laughs> you can print them off and do this craft. So again, thanks for watching today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next time, and you can see what we're up to. Bye! Bye.